SpaceX is making significant strides with Starship, aiming to assist humanity in achieving crucial goals such as getting to the moon or even Mars. But did you know this? Beyond these noble missions, Starship has the potential to serve as a space station. Sounds wild, right? However, this vision is increasingly coming into focus especially as NASA's current space stations face various limitations. So, what makes the Starship space station stand out from the other commercial stations NASA has? What role might it fulfill for both NASA and SpaceX down the road? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. The space race in the next several years will enter its most important stages when countries continuously take bolder steps on important fronts like getting to the moon or Mars. The U.S. is currently the country leading most of those races, but it seems that they're facing an extremely urgent problem, the ISS's upcoming retirement. It can be said that the space station is considered a crucial element to all U.S. space strategies, and it would be a great disadvantage to them if they lost this support. So, in the last operational years of the ISS, the task of NASA and other companies will be to create at least one space station that can replace this legendary space station. To achieve that goal, NASA awarded many contracts to private companies to build the new space station. Most recently, they announced the Collaborations for Commercial Space Capabilities 2, or CCSC2 initiative, that included seven U.S. private companies. Among these, SpaceX gets a lot of attention because it has many differences compared to other projects. So, what are those differences? Well, unlike other stations, SpaceX plans to build a space station based on its largest vehicle, Starship. Starship has long been designed with a vast interior space capable of carrying up to 100 people to Mars on each mission. This architecture envisions Starship as both a means of transportation and as an in-space low-Earth orbit destination, supported by the Super Heavy Booster, the Dragon spacecraft, and SpaceX's Starlink, as well as other elements like crew and cargo transport and communications. Having Starship serve as a destination implies that SpaceX plans to use it as an LEO outpost given its large internal volume and future capability to conduct long-duration missions. Side-by-side, -side, SpaceX Starships are far larger than the ISS, comparable in size to the external fuel tanks of the retired space shuttle. To break it down, Starship is over 50 meters tall and a diameter of 9 meters, and with Starship V3, it hits a length of almost 70 meters. However, the habitable area would be about 18 meters in the fairing section of the spacecraft, but it can provide a space of up to 1,000 cubic meters, larger than the ISS's approximate volume of 900 cubic meters. With this volume, it can be divided into many floors with separate and more diverse functions than on the ISS. First, work areas will be separate from other ones. Here, SpaceX will equip many modern systems for observation, research, and space station operations. Besides the area for professional work, Starship will have other areas with the same amenities as at home on Earth. For example, they'll have a separate floor for the garden, the kitchen, and food storage to serve the dining demands. There will be another area with modern exercise equipment to help astronauts maintain their physical health. The bedroom will be arranged on a separate floor with a comfy and private design for astronauts to rest. There are also many other areas for astronauts to relax, observe, and experience the feeling of zero gravity. But this is just a very small part of this giant spacecraft. Many believe that SpaceX will gradually remove the remaining areas, like propellant tanks and engines, to convert them into habitable space to make the most of Starship's huge size. If this does happen, that space is going to be three times as big as the aforementioned space, which is more than 3,000 cubic meters for each Starship. At that time, the internal designs will certainly change a lot. However, removing those important parts is going to be a big challenge and related to many other problems. It's unclear how SpaceX will do this, so you can give some predictions while we wait for more updates. In addition, SpaceX also has other ideas about connecting starships together. Specifically, about 20 will be connected consecutively into a circle and move continuously around a central structure thanks to the effect of gravity. It'll be like a giant Ferris wheel in entertainment centers. One of the more remarkable advantages of SpaceX Starships is the affordability. With a price tag of a $2 million a Starship, a fleet of 50 would only cost $1 billion. Such a space station with a volume 100 times greater than the ISS could accommodate up to 350 people based on the standards set by the ISS. It's worth noting that the ISS was originally designed to support seven people, but temporarily hosted a record of nine individuals during a handover in 2009. 
With that in mind, a space station based on giant starships with a capacity of 450 occupants during surges would be super cost effective with an estimated cost total of around $2 billion. This is clearly a superior advantage of the Starship Space Station compared to the ISS, and if deployed successfully, this will truly be a revolution that SpaceX creates for the space station aspect in particular and the aerospace industry in general. And the result? Space travel will no longer be exclusive to just the billionaires. Instead, it will be an opportunity accessible for regular Joes from all walks of life. It can be said that NASA is extremely excited about that. That's why SpaceX became one of the seven companies in their CCSC2 project. The determination is even more obvious when NASA also reveals more specific information about this plan in the Space Act agreement between them and SpaceX. According to this agreement, the Starship Space Station development roadmap will have to go through 13 miles stones from the Starship test flights to the completion of the space station. This process will take about five years and the final milestone in the fourth quarter of 2028 when SpaceX will have completed all of the preliminary design reviews with the Starship LEO crewed space station, commencing operations for the station in 2030 by the time the ISS stops working. Among the companies getting CCSC2 agreements is Blue Origin. That company will use the agreement to work on an integrated commercial space transport capability ensuring safe, affordable, and high-frequency U.S. access to orbit for crew and other missions. The statement gave no other details, and Blue Origin didn't respond to questions about those plans. While rather vague, this statement does indicate that Blue Origin is working on a crewed spacecraft. The company started work on such a vehicle more than a decade ago with two funded Space Act agreements in the initial phases of NASA's commercial crew development program. Those awards intended for launch initially on the Atlas V. Blue Origin did not compete in later phases of the program. Sierra Space is also part of this award. The company is collaborating with NASA to develop its commercial low-Earth orbit ecosystem, including next-gen space transport, in-space infrastructure, and expandable space facilities. Through the agreement, Sierra Space provides NASA with valuable insight and collaboration into its crewed Dream Chaser space plane, new commercial space station architectures, and in-space logistics, plus refueling and servicing systems. NASA will advance the deployment of Sierra Space's platform and ecosystem by giving access to facilities and support for environmental and crew systems testing tools and software. They are building the technology, business platform, and ecosystem to power the new space economy providing products and services to both government and commercial customers, meaning there will be a competitive U.S. commercial space economy vital to the long-term U.S. interests. This agreement provides collaboration and knowledge sharing from NASA to a new generation of space pioneers building our low-Earth orbit ecosystem. Sierra Space's open architecture enables the creation of a robust LEO commercial ecosystem and is the catalyst for the next breakthrough innovations in biotechnology, human health, telecom, computing, advanced materials, and clean energy. Think Orbital received an agreement to refine its plans for large in-space platforms for research, manufacturing, and crude applications. VAST will work with NASA to support its plans for Haven 1 and 2 modules and crewed missions to it. Other CCSC2 awards went to Northrop Grumman for an autonomous spacecraft called Persistent Platform, based on its Cygnus vehicle, for commercial research and manufacturing, and to Special Aerospace Services for an in-space servicing technology called the Autonomous Maneuvering Unit. The CCSC2 agreements come nine years after the first such agreements NASA made with four companies. Final Frontier Design got an award to work on a pressure suit. Orbital ATK, now part of Northrop Grumman, got one for its Mission Extension Vehicle Satellite Servicing spacecraft. SpaceX for technologies needed on deep space missions that included methane oxygen propulsion used on Starship and ULA for a variety of technologies for their Vulcan launch vehicle. NASA and the U.S. government must create favorable conditions to accelerate space station projects as our competitor China is steadily advancing. China has been operating its completed Chang'ong orbital outpost for almost two years now. In just over a year, China has built a basic structure with three modules, and they'll also double the size of the space station in the coming years. Although much smaller than ISS, it looks pretty spacious thanks to its neater and simpler design. New technologies are another strength of Chang'ong, with the most advanced equipment for observation, research, analysis, and more. Systems serving astronauts' lives like dining, health, personal activities, and care have also been greatly improved. This space station is currently operating quite well, and it will become the only space station in orbit if NASA has no replacement once the ISS gets decommissioned. However, it doesn't stop there. China's space station appears to be continuing expansion.
In the future, we will try to upgrade our facilities, said Li Ming, chairman of the Science and Technology Committee of the China Academy of Space Technology, CAST, speaking during a plenary session on human spaceflight at the International Astronautical Congress in Italy, October 17th. CAST designed and manufactured the models for Qiangyang. The upgrades to Qiangyang will come in a number of steps, according to Li. The first would be to update the Chinese space station's core module to be able to accept further modules. With this purpose, we try to upgrade the space station from the T-shape, presently it is the T-shape, to the future cross shape, or you may also call it the double T shape, Lee said. He added that this would allow China to send more space science experiments racks and large extra vehicular experiments and overall extend the scale of operations aboard Qiangong. Another upgrade is developing the renewable spaceships, said Lee. The versatile spacecraft named Mengzhou will come in two variants, one for sending crew to the moon and another for Qiangong. With this spacecraft, we can support three astronauts for the lunar missions and also the seven astronauts for the new space station missions, said Lee. Therefore, after all, the journey towards establishing the Starship space station undoubtedly presents numerous challenges and opportunities. Building the Starship space station involves a range of obstacles, with SpaceX's immediate focus on conducting smooth launches and landings. Even after its deployment, it'll still face formidable competition in the space sector. However, looking ahead, there's confidence that these objectives will soon materialize. A space station comprised of colossal spacecraft will cease to be just a vision. It'll become a tangible reality, poised to compete among other space stations for the distinction of being the largest human habitat in space. This outpost holds promise as a crucial waypoint for humanity's deeper forays into space exploration, presenting both challenges and intriguing opportunities. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.